country, despite Vladimir Putin's declaration that four occupied regions are now part of Russia. In his nightly address, Mr Zelensky said the path for his nation was difficult but clear, and he was confident of victory. In a signing ceremony at the Kremlin on Friday, Mr Putin announced that Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson were being absorbed into Russia. The announcement follows discredited referendums staged by Moscow and enforced by its soldiers. President Zelensky says the Ukrainian army is making significant progress in the east, where the Russian-held city of Liman is reported to be almost encircled. He added that his country has also applied to join NATO. De facto, my... De facto, we have already completed our path to NATO. De facto, we have already proven interoperability with the alliance's standards. They are real for Ukraine, real on the battlefield and in all aspects of our interaction. We trust each other, we help each other and we protect each other. This is what the alliance is. De facto, today Ukraine is applying to make it de jure, under a procedure consistent with our significance for the protection of our entire community, under an accelerated procedure. We know it's possible. We have seen Finland and Sweden start accession to the alliance this year without a membership action plan. This is fair. This is also fair for Ukraine. Well, our correspondent Hugo Bachega has been following developments from Kyiv. Well, the Ukrainians are saying that this uh, changes anything, that everything that happened in Moscow yesterday was a farce, that uh, the announcements have no legal uh, value, no legitimacy. And they say they're going ahead with the offensive to uh, retake uh, towns and villages that are now under Russian occupation. And those four regions of Ukraine, Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson, are only partially occupied by the Russians and fighting continues. And in the last hour, we had a military spokesperson saying that the Ukrainian forces have now encircled the strategically important city of Liman in the Donetsk uh, region. This is a major hub for the Russians uh, to uh, resupply their troops in the east of the country. So now uh, it seems that the Ukrainians have now managed to encircle this uh, town, uh, the town of uh, Liman, with thousands of uh, Russian troops now completely uh, cut off. And if they manage to retake this city, it is going to be a major uh, victory for the Ukrainians. And this is happening, obviously, just hours after that announcement by President Putin that uh, Russia was going ahead with the annexation of these uh, four uh, regions of Ukraine, an announcement that has been uh, rejected by the Ukrainians and also by most countries around the world. Yes, yeah, so what impact does that have on the Ukrainians' taking of Liman, given that that is in Donetsk, which Putin has said now that it's in his view, under Russian territory. It's on Russian soil and is seen as an act of aggression. Well, the Ukrainians say that nothing really changes. They're going ahead to retake territory that belongs to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, they say that these announcements being made by President Putin are uh, Moscow's reaction to recent uh, military defeats on the battlefield. The Ukrainians feel they've got the momentum. Uh, they're going ahead with this counteroffensive. Fighting is also happening uh, in the Kherson region, another region that uh, has been annexed by uh, Russia, at least in the announcement by President Putin. Uh, yesterday. I think there is obviously the fear that uh, the announcement uh, could lead to an escalation of tensions. Russia is likely to say that these regions are now part of Russia and that any attack on those areas would be seen as an attack on Russia itself. Uh, but the Ukrainians say that uh, these declarations don't have any kind of legal implication. And again, they're going ahead with the offensive to take back territory. And I think they're supported by most countries around the world, the international community. I think countries uh, have rejected uh, the announcements that were made by President Putin yesterday. More sanctions have been announced, and I think uh, the Ukrainians uh, enjoy uh, support from Western countries, uh, and they say they're going ahead with this offensive to take back territory. Uh, and Hugo, Ukraine is reporting that the director of the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia, which is the biggest power plant in Europe, has been detained by the Russians. What details do we have on that? 
So we had a statement this morning from the uh, nuclear operator saying that the head of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant was detained by Russian forces uh, yesterday afternoon in the city of uh, uh, in Erhoda, uh, in the south of the country. Uh, and they say that he was blindfolded and taken to an undisclosed location. They are now appealing to the International Atomic Energy Agency to press the Russians to uh, release him. And uh, for weeks we talked about uh, tensions around uh, this nuclear facility uh, and uh, fighting around this complex had raised concerns over the safety of this uh, nuclear uh, power station. So uh, now another development in the crisis there with reports that the head of this uh, power station has been detained by Russian forces.